bring a microphone around for questions. Yep. Um, got to work yesterday and put that game to bed and um, started on Kentucky yesterday afternoon and have immense respect for Mark. He and I have grown to be uh, really good friends. Um, he's one of the best in the business. He's done a tremendous job at Kentucky over the time he's been there. His teams are always uh, very disciplined, very physical. Um, that's a really tough place to play when you go there, as you can see from every time we've played there. Um, it's been really tough. So um, a lot of excitement uh, playing an SEC opponent on the road. Uh, I think we know around this place how hard that can be. And um, you get an opportunity to play at night uh, on the road, and you know the environment's going to be um, really loud. And uh, we got to prepare for a tough, really physical game, um, which is just that way every time we play Kentucky. Hey, Coach, I'm, I'm curious, when you guys went to go to prepare for Brock or when you're preparing for Brock, how much of that, you know, plan to attack him or defend him will be based on what he's put on tape this year and what he did for years, you know, behind closed doors here? Very little. You know, I have a lot of respect for Brock, um, his dad, his family. Um, what Brock did for this university was awesome. He was um, a wonderful teammate and uh, just a great kid. Uh, always put the team first and would do anything to help the team uh, and really helped our culture while he was here. So um, I have a lot of appreciation for what he was, what he did and his in fact he graduated from here. You know, it was really cool when he told me he was going to do that and then he was going to go play and, and he did that. So I know, uh, obviously, you know, True, they know any SEC road game is going to be tough. But when you play an opponent like Kentucky's come up a game like they did, does that make them even more dangerous than like what they might ordinarily be? I don't know. I think it's all about perception and how you perceive things. They're they're just as dangerous whether they won or lost that game, in my opinion. I mean, I don't I don't get into the whole. You know, we're going to prepare the same way regardless of what happened in that game. You know, a lot of things uh, went wrong quickly for them in that game, and it snowballed in some ways. And uh, I know what they're capable of. I've seen them on tape. I know the football players they got. I know how physical they are. I know how they're coached. And uh, we got to get ready for a really tough opponent. Trevor, to follow up on Brock, just what are his strengths? What are the things you guys are going to see when you guys line up against him on Saturday? I think we'll see. I think they're, you know, that's part of their identity is, is figuring out who Brock is, and, and as well as their other quarterbacks that's playing. So um, I think that's that's something that, that they got to answer, you know. And uh, our job is to stop whatever they do, and we got to work hard on that. We got to worry about us. Coach, obviously the transfer portal is, is here to stay. I guess can you give us just a little bit of an idea uh, with Brock and and Pop, just kind of what, it, or not necessarily them, but what it looks like. Uh, each year as you evaluate and you meet with these guys and you know whether they say I'm thinking about this coach or you say we're thinking about this just what does that process look like annually? I think it's different each kid you know like uh, every kid's different every kid's in a different spot you know like what age am I uh, how much am I playing will I get an opportunity somewhere else what's going on with my family my family dynamic uh, I don't think there's a cookie cutter answer to that question. It's, you know, I, I wouldn't delve into specifically each kid that I deal with. I think that's relative to me and the kid, um, not for public consumption, um, but certainly there's conversations I had, and you know, the transfer portal is a, is an option for some guys to think about going somewhere else, and you know, it's it's unfortunate because the feedback we get from the NFL is there's nowhere they'd rather have players. And here developing. Um, countless GMs have told me the kids that come out of your program are so much better off and developed for having stayed, even over playing, because of what kind of practice they get and who they get to go against practice. They feel like their best evaluation is when they come to our practice and see guys go against each other. That's not anything directly at, at Brock and, and, and Pop, not at all. Both, both those guys were awesome young men, great young men for our program, but just as a whole, asking about transfer portal stuff. Coach, what is it that you know, Kentucky does so well um, that makes it a challenge for you guys when you go up there each time? Physical. So you, you play defense. You have physical lines of scrimmage. You have huge people on the offensive and defensive line, and you're hard to move the ball on. So the environment they create is very good. They got great fans. They got a great stadium. They produced their stadium to have more premium seating, so they actually get less people in, but they're louder when they're there, they're passionate. 
Um, they play really hard. Uh, they're well coached. That's what makes it tough. Give me your thoughts on Deion Walker for Kentucky. Yeah, extremely physical, versatile player. Could play inside out. Seems like he's been there forever. He's a kid we recruited, highly recruited kid, tremendous athlete, uh, just a, like a wrecking ball. I mean, he, he literally can wreck a play from any position. And I mean, they even dropped him last year. And so he's he's a, a tremendous athlete. Kirby, I know we're a few days out, but when do you start looking at the weather in terms of affecting the game plan? Um, thunderstorms, seventy-five percent chance or more, and how that affects what you guys want to do and what can you do? Yeah, we look at it uh, last night and start tracking it each and every day. We do every two weeks wet ball drill and practice with wet balls and like we're going to play in the rain and we've been able to practice some this year a couple times in the rain and um, you know, sometimes the, the weather up there, typically it's later in the year we play them and typically it's much colder, which we've had some really tough games up there in the cold, in the wind. Um, this year it looks like there may be some inclement weather and uh, we've got to prepare for it. So. Yeah, Kirby, two questions. One, do you know any more about um, Oscar's ankle before he got dinged up on Saturday? And two, with Lawson, just how far has he progressed this year? He's, he's made a big play passing the image the first two weeks. Um, Oscar's good. Oscar's fine. Um, Lawson is uh, done really well. Uh, you know, he, 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 he would have had the same progression. He, he got injured last year in, in, in camp, and so he missed uh, some time with that significant ankle injury he had. But he's been growing since the time he came back last year, and he wasn't really 100% when he came back to play, but he was able to play, and he was coming off that high ankle, and he got better and better as the year went on. Had good bowl practices, good bowl game. He had great spring practice. He's worked really hard at the things he's got to improve on uh, during fall camp, uh, and he continues to work to get better. Kirby, it appears that you had uh, six interior defensive linemen play between nine and 19 snaps. Can you? Talk about where that position group is at and, and what you've seen from them. Yeah, excited about that group. They work really hard. Uh, they've gotten a, a, a ton of work uh, this fall camp in terms of the youth has. Our older players, which we've got a good group of old and a good group of young in that room, we're really pleased with, with where they are. Um, the amount of work the young guys have gotten is probably more than we've ever gotten a young group. It's been great because we've been able to take care of our older guys and get them in games and get them going, but then also improve the younger guys. So we've got a lot of depth in that room. Kerry, what have you seen from Jamon as part of this Kentucky defense? Uh, too early to tell. You know, it's one of those things I, I just got to look, look at their offense first. So I studied the offense all day yesterday. This morning I got to look at a couple games. Um, so I don't, you know, I think you'd be better asked to have offensive coach that question. Yeah, two questions. One, what happened with Nusir Johnson? Looked like he picked up an injury late on Saturday. And then what have you seen out of C.J. Allen and Randall Wilson so far this season and how they've progressed? Yeah, Nazir had a little bit of a sublux uh, he's had before. Should be fine. Um, Raylan and C.J. Uh, are both very intelligent, uh, mature beyond their years. They're guys that we've talked about repeatedly. They've been thrown in the fire. They've had to get in the fire and do it at a young age, and uh, they're both growing. I mean, most of the time, you're playing your first real meaningful time at linebacker at Georgia has been in your second season. Both of them had to play in their first season due to injuries, and that seems to be happening more and more across the country. And these guys have prepared well. They're very intelligent, and they're very well coached. Uh, speaking of Raylan and CJ, they both talked about watching the 2022 draft and that, that helped them. You've got another year where you're able to play a lot of players on defense. How much was that 22 draft like a proof of concept that you were able to use that you know you don't have to come here and play every down and rack up snaps to get those? Yeah, I don't know. We sell that. I mean, we sell the use of our personnel and the playing of our players. We sell it immensely. You know, people try to uh, sell against it. I mean, with saying you don't have I mean, but all you got to do is talk to one NFL person and they'll tell you that they'd much rather have uh, quality over quantity. They'd much rather judge you on the, 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 the plays you play. Um, and they'd much rather you be training in Georgia than anywhere else. So there's not a lot to, to argue in, in regard to that. I think the 22 draft was just uh, an exceptional group of defensive players who were all at one time here, and uh, yeah, we, we used that. It's a great sell, but regardless of if 22 happened, we would still have the same defensive philosophy. You need depth, you need players, 
you know, a lot of guys who can play winning football, and if you can prove to us you can play winning football, you'll be on the field and you'll get an opportunity to put on tape what you can do. It's not about stats. They, they can care less about stats. Kirby, with an injury like Mike Kells, what are the things you need to see this week uh, to be able to say, hey, he's, he's good to go for the game? Well, he's got to build a practice. He's got to build a out and compete and uh, run, put pressure on it. Um, and he's doing a great job of rehab. He did a great job this weekend of getting extra time in and see where he's at. Curry, I know the objective every week is to win, but when you play one of these bye games or an FCS or uh, opponent, are, are there other objectives that you look to meet? You've talked about coaching at the bottom of the roster, and in that sense, is, was a mission accomplished against Tennessee Tech? I don't know if mission accomplished meaning playing guys. Probably yes. Mission accomplished in terms of how we played, maybe no. Um, we, we got a chance to grow kids and go out and play, and you know that's probably an individual basis judgment. You know, how did this guy play? How did that guy play? How did we play as a unit? How did we play as a unit on special teams when other guys got in? And you know, a lot of these kids early in their careers, this is the opportunity they get to play in front of their family. This is the opportunity they get to play in front of uh, their community or TV, and uh, that's important to them, and they practice hard too, so I'm very thankful we got to get some guys in the game. Kirk, if you get your thoughts through the first couple games on Xavier Truss and uh, Chess Champions. Yeah, both kids uh, extremely tough, physical. Um, they carry our culture really well. I don't think you'll find two individuals who have uh, had more contact at the University of Georgia than these two guys, especially Trust with the amount of time he's been here. And uh, Chaz, you know, he seeks contact, and uh, they're both um, kind of what we want our program to represent in terms of toughness and discipline. And nowhere is that more needed than this week. And uh, that's probably why they're in front of you guys, because they carry the water in terms of uh, discipline and toughness. Can you update us on Warren Brinson's injury? And as it relates to Brock and quarterbacks on the transfer portal, is that a different situation given the fact that there's only one that you guys play most of the time? Uh, you know, Carson's kind of an outlier in that regard in terms of waiting. I don't know how to answer that. I don't understand that. Well, first on Warren, he looks good. Hopefully uh, be able to go today. Um, we'll find out more. I don't honestly know uh, until we get out there, but it seems to be good. And uh, he did some stuff. Uh, yesterday in, in the weight room. I don't understand the question on Brock. Well, you know, Carson's, you know, not many guys are, are waiting three years these days to get a chance to start. Uh, do you understand when a guy like Brock has, has waited? Brock and, waited three years? Yeah, yeah, no, to, to move on because, you know, there's another year behind uh, Carson this year. Right. I'm asking, is that is that a different deal than somebody that, that is a year or two in the system and, and just wants to play right now? I think everybody wants to play right now. I, mean, I haven't met a player that doesn't want to play. Um, you know, I understand what you're asking. If you're trying to say, was Brock's situation different than Carson's? No, I mean, just in general, with guys looking to transfer, you know, early and often. Um, well, know. not everybody's looking to transfer early and often. They all want to play. They don't all want to transfer. I think that would be a generalization that's not there. You know what I mean? I'd th say at the quarterback position, there comes a point in time when if you haven't played, you're running out of time to play. So. I don't know what you want a kid to do. Wait out his whole career and not play. I mean, he did graduate. He became a better player. He certainly feels that he had a, a great experience at Georgia and um, two national championship rings. Uh, so I think that, that that's, a, that's a positive uh, more than it is any kind of negative. Coach, what's your evaluation of uh, Anthony Evans as a, a punt kick returner and, um, and how has his uh, progress that translated to the wide receiver position? Um, well, Anthony is, number one, tough. He's aggressive. He uh, has a lot of confidence in his return skills, and he has a lot of confidence in his uh, receiver skills. Uh, he has worked really hard at two positions in our offense, both the slot and the, the Z. Um, you know, with, with some receiver injuries through camp and just not a lot of depth. He, he worked at two positions. First of all, to play those two positions in our offense, you have to be extremely smart. Um, and he's gone out there and done a great job of repping at Z and F. I'm really proud of what he's done there. Um, he's had a bigger impact on the games as a returner. Um, and he works really hard at that. He takes a lot of pride. I'm hard on him as a returner. 
because I have a high standard of what that position in decision making should be. Um, he's extremely aggressive, and I want him to keep being smart with the ball. Kirby, you mentioned the, the NFL loves the way you develop players here. But kind of on the flip side of that, just how closely are you able to monitor you know, what guys are doing at the next level? Like Lad scored a touchdown yesterday. Do you get a report? Do you pay attention? Are you, are you so focused on this team here? Just kind of how do you monitor guys at the next level? Yeah, I don't monitor it. I, I do get text messages, whether it's from my family, my son, uh, friends. People put it out there, and I see my phone, you know. So it's one of those things. But I don't, I don't have a report. I don't monitor it. I don't go say. I just, you know, I get a text and it's like, hey, lad, scored a touchdown, and I see a video of it, and I think it's pretty cool, awesome. Brock, like he had a good day. There's a lot of those guys that that played, and three defensive guys started in secondaries. I think. I mean, it's a lot of good that, that you get, but I ain't got time to think about it right now. Yeah, Coach, you mentioned doing the wet ball drills and things like that, preparing for rain. You know, I'm curious what your thoughts are on the keys to being successful on offense, particularly with when the rain starts, and you know maybe some things that immediately change with the game plan if there is some rain. I'd rather not even get into those. Yeah, how has Chess Chambliss improved as a player over his time here? He's gotten much more intelligent in terms of football knowledge. So he can uh, do recognition. He can tell you tendencies. He knows snap count cadences. He does tackle reports on what their weaknesses are, what their strengths are, what the backfield set is to run, pass. Um, he's really tough. He's really physical. He understands our defense. We give our defensive players tools that they can use, but we can't practice them all because there are things that happen on this formation, this play with this defense, it's basically a, a very low probability that it happens. But if it happens, you can do this. He hits on those. He gets those. He understands it, and he puts himself in an advantageous position when that multiple hits and uh, makes him valuable with his toughness and the, the kind of the way he practices. Time for one more question. So I just want you to also want to assess your players here, but the job Jared Wilson has done two games and the snap in yeah, Jerry's done a good job. He's practiced more the last two weeks than he did in camp. So I think he's shown a rapid improvement because of the amount of work he's been able to do in practice. And we need him to continue getting better. Uh, we need Jerry to, to, to be a leader, and the center has to make a lot of decisions on our offensive line. Thank you, Coach.